All right, folks. And upstairs is Dredge. So once again, four o'clock, we'll be finishing this one up. We'll be watching a short uh, portion of Saving the Bay, those of you want to, and then I hear the rumor that there'll be a bar open for drinks. So uh, we can finish the day that way. All right, well, without further ado, can I get, can I get you guys to be quiet, please? <laughs> One conference at a time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Harbor Coalition, uh, which you've been hearing a little bit about all day long, is the creation of many organizations and many people, but probably no more than, more so than the uh, Kaplan Fund, which is a foundation in New York that's been an integral um, uh, instigator and uh, uh, supporter of many efforts, including Central Park, for instance, right? That way back in the day, way back in the day, but there's, they've been active uh, in all sorts of imaginative and wonderful efforts to improve the environment in the, in the region. And to moderate and lead us in this panel is the program officer for the Kaplan Fund, Ms. Laura Hansen. Would you please give her a big round of applause? Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Um, I'm very happy to be moderating this panel. The Kaplan Fund um, has been working on environmental and open space issues for more than 60 years in New York City. And for the past 10, we've worked, um, supported a lot of efforts to uh, develop and nurture public access to the waterfront. And one of the many things that we've learned is that our waterfront interests are very much dependent on a healthy harbor, a robust port, and an organized constituency. The inter interconnectivity that um, Chris Ward was talking about earlier. And so we're very pleased to launch the New York, New Jersey Harbor Coalition. And um, some of you may have attended the MWA's panel in November where we heard from other regions about coalitions who've been very successful in bringing a lot of federal money to those regions and particularly to water bodies there. Um, many of the strategies we heard are at the core of this effort because this is really about taking a unified strategic ask to Washington. We've heard a lot this morning about it's just about the money. And that's really what this effort is about, is focusing a concerted effort on Washington, D.C. to bring more federal money to this harbor. So our group of panelists, and along with um, a number of other colleagues, have been uh, working for the past year to shape a long-term political campaign to bring more federal money here, and that's what we're gonna hear about today. We're gonna let you know a little bit about the game plan moving forward, and then we really do wanna hear from you. Uh, we want everybody on this boat and a number of uh, your networks to be involved in this. So we want to hear how you can be involved, how you'd like to be involved, how this can help you, and how you can help this. So that we'll do that at the end. But before we get into the details of that, I want to take a minute and remember the why. Why we should care about this harbor and why anybody else should, particularly those with the power of the purse strings. <coughs> So why is New York, New Jersey Harbor worth all this effort? We've heard a lot about it this morning. We've seen quite a lot of it today, but I just want to um, call out a few sort of facts about it for us to keep in, in, in our mind as we have this conversation. It frames more than 700 miles of land, five times more than San Francisco or Seattle, who we heard from, and even more than Hong Kong. It's the largest port on the East Coast. Nearly 300,000 jobs generate $12 billion in wages and two billion dollars in tax revenue. We've also heard a lot about the importance of that from Chris Ward and others. It's the, um, it provides natural and recreational resources for 22 million people. It is itself a cultural icon and, icon and home to several others. The Statue of Liberty, Ellis Island, Governor's Island, and the 26,000 acre Gateway National Recreation Area. And I think as we all know as an ecological resource, it's priceless. So, all that makes the harbor an inherently compelling cause for more funding. But what's really driving this effort is the neglect, and um, particularly the fact that our harbor is grossly underfunded compared to other water bodies around the country. Um, in more than one instance, more than 50 times the amount our region is receiving. So while you probably know these numbers, they bear repeating for this conversation. In two, uh, 2010, the Great Lakes region received $475 million in federal money. Chesapeake Bay received $50 million, Puget Sound $50 million, Long Island Sound $7 million, Lake Champlain $4 million. And in that same um, 
year, New York, New Jersey Harbor received 800,000. So there's a big disparity, and that's part of what's driving this. And while with state and city coffers largely depleted, we really have um, seen that a federal strategy is the best bet to bring, to put this harbor on par with other nationally significant water bodies. So in addition to this fair share issue, there are three other factors which make this an opportune time to launch this coalition. First, as we've heard a lot about today, we have a couple of decades worth of public sector planning to work from. We have the Army Corps and Port Authority's Comprehensive Restoration Plan. We have the Harbor Estuary Program's Comprehensive Conservation and Management Plan. We have the city's Comprehensive Waterfront Plan and the um, EDC's Waves Action Plan and a mayor who's really behind all of this. And the National Park Service is um, developing a general management plan for Gateway National Recreation Area. That's underway right now. So important, an important point about this, the coalition is not about generating more plans. Within all of these existing plans, there are plenty of projects across the region um, which simply need funding. The second factor is that we have like-minded like advocates and agencies eager to scale up the implementation and they know how to work together. Um, at MWA's fall conference, John McLaughlin from DEP summed up the situation when he said, we leverage one another's funding very well, but we're still working on a shoestring. The third factor is there's a confluence of positive events in DC. The Department of Interior, EPA, and the Army Corps are all very interested in the harbor and doing work here. And Secretary Ken Salazar, the Department of Interior Secretary, is particularly proactive, has visited the region four times in the last couple of years, and is um, working very actively with America's Great Outdoors program. And President Obama has an urban agenda through that program. And then there are two national efforts mentioned earlier that are focused on bringing a united front of advocacy for great water, body water, waters of body around the country. The Great Waters Campaign, which we are now part of, and the Waters We Share campaigns. So this coalition has all that it's in its favor, and it's a really it was launched to lead a multi-year advocacy campaign to find the money and bring it here by targeting existing and potential new sources of money and securing federal authorizations and appropriations specifically for the harbor. Right now, the coalition is made up of 10 organizations, but it is poised to grow, and now we'll talk about that when we get into the audience um, part of the program. But right now, they are, um, I'll just list them, but first, let me say they bring a mix of complementary skills they have scientific and technical expertise, ecological restoration experience, organizing experience in New York and New Jersey, policy development and analysis skills, and lobbying and advocacy expertise, and particularly a number of them have a very strong presence in Washington. So the 10 organizations that make up the coalition at the moment are the Environmental Defense Fund, Hudson River Foundation, Ironbound Community Corporation, Metropolitan Waterfront Alliance, National Parks Conservation Association, New York, New Jersey Baykeeper, New York City Environmental Justice Alliance, Regional Plan Association, Trust for Public Land, and We Act for Environmental Justice. And some of the um, groups are represented here today. They've been in conversation for about a year, and they've come to consensus around six very broad goals, which I'm gonna read to you. They are restore the ecology of the harbor, provide and enhance public access through land acquisition and the restoration of parks and natural areas, invest in green and or natural infrastructure systems to treat storm water and reduce combined sewer overflows, reduce pollution from the port and other local industry to promote environmental justice and the health of maritime communities and workers, ensure waterborne cargo is moved efficiently to promote the economic vitality of maritime commerce, protect people and property in our most vulnerable areas by addressing um, and adapting to the challenge of sea level rise and a changing climate. So those are very broad goals. Um, we're going to hear a little bit more about those goals and the nuts and bolts of how this is going to work for our panelists. So I'm just going to introduce them very briefly with just organizational affiliation since you have bios. And then I'll ask a few questions and then we'll open it up to you guys. Um, just across from me is Mark Matzel with Trust for Public Land, Peggy Shepard from We Act for Environmental Justice, Elizabeth Rubman from New York, New Jersey Baykeeper, Rob Perani from Regional Plan Association, and Chad Lord from National Conservation Parks Association. 
So um, I'm going to start by asking each panelist to talk to us about why this effort is worth their effort and what their organization would like to see happen, what success looks like over the next five years. We all know it's difficult to work in coalition sometimes or challenging. Um, so we'd like to hear about why they've decided to put their resources into this effort. Uh, as I, uh, my name is Chad Lord. I'm with the National Parks Conservation Association. And why is NPCA involved in this effort? Well, I think we passed a couple of those reasons just earlier today when we passed the Statue of Liberty in Atlas Island. Um, already mentioned a couple of times as well, um, the Gateway National Recreation Area. Um, national parks play a, a critical um, role within the, the landscape of, of this area. And the National Parks Conservation Association was founded in 1919 to preserve and protect um, national park units. So um, it is our belief that in order to really protect those units for the future generations, we really need to pre protect the landscape in which surrounds them. And since those units in this area are surrounded by water, um, you know, protecting the water and the ecosystem, um, restoring that back to health, and ensuring that there's a lot of access for people to be able to um, to be able to access the water and enjoy the landscape is really critical to us. NBCA has a strategic priority around the country to really be engaged in these types of landscape conservation efforts. You know, we're working in the Great Lakes, we're working in the Everglades, Chesapeake Bay. We have got a program um, in the Colorado River. Um, you know, down. So we were really actively involved in a lot of different places, and so we, we hope that we can um, bring some of our um, uh, some of our expertise and some of our um, Washington-based um, lobbying um, to really help support the activities that are going on at the national level, while at the local level really beginning to protect the, the national park units that um, drive drive our mission. Um, Ron, we've had a request that we stand. Sorry, oh, uh, use the podium if you like. Well, I'll just stand out. Uh, Rob Perani from Regional Plan Association. Uh, why is RPA involved in this? Well, I think I don't need to explain to this audience, you know, what a great place uh, the New York, New Jersey Harbor is. And for Regional Plan Association, which concerns itself not just with conservation, but also with economic development, uh, it's important for both of those reasons. Uh, it's a place that uh, really defines the region. It's a place where you, and, and you all know this, uh, you have to balance the needs of the, uh, of the environment, the needs of public access, and the needs of commerce and, and uh, transportation. Um, and it's a place that really, uh, whose future is really going to help define whether this region uh, is able to compete successfully uh, with other great global cities. So we view the success of the harbor uh, as instrumental to the su success of this metropolitan area. Um, I think more specifically, uh, you know, there are plenty of places around the harbor uh, which could be better. Uh, and whether you're talking about uh, great public spaces uh, like Governor's Island or Floyd Bennett Field or uh, Reese Beach or any number of neighborhoods uh, where you can improve access and make those communities more vibrant and successful, um, those are reasons to get involved. Um, you know, there's plenty of uh, work to be done in the water in terms of cleaning up water and taking better care of our maritime infrastructure. Uh, and there's plenty of work to be done. Uh, I think the, the work that was done by the Army Corps and the Hudson River Foundation and EPA in uh, creating the comprehensive restoration plan has really laid out a blueprint for restoring the ecology of the harbor and, and one for which there's really a lack of, of follow-up money. So those are all the things we want to see happen as a result of the coalition. Um, you know, I think it's uh, as, as was mentioned, uh, there's a lot of plans out there, whether they're site-specific, neighborhood-based, citywide, or regional. Um, and our hope is that through this coalition, we can kind of galvanize. Um, I think you know you, we heard from our federal election representatives earlier today, and they're all interested. Uh, but we all know that um, you know by working together, the whole can be greater than the sum of its parts. And that's really the goal behind the coalition is to get all of our federal representatives working together. Uh, going down to Washington and speaking with one voice because uh, in order to, uh, uh, to get the resources in these tough times, that's what's going to be needed. I'm Elizabeth Ribbon with Baykeeper. And um, I think for us, we've already had a success just having New Jersey recognized as part of the Harbor Estuary. If Jersey people can relate to that, um, we're just happy to be included and not forgotten as, as often the case. 
Um, for as everyone has alluded to, we have lots of plans, and um, so for us, it would be a success to have a long-term, sustainable funding mechanism for the Harbor Estuary that complements those existing plans. Um, at Baykeeper, we have a long history of acquiring sites, and um, we need a lot of those sites need attention, and so we'd like to see money for stewardship. Uh, for me personally, I'm brand new with New York, New Jersey Beekeeper, so it's just an, a really exciting opportunity to learn about um, all the amazing work everyone's doing in the region. Thanks. Well, hello, I'm Peggy Shepard with We Act for Environmental Justice, and we've had a strong connection to the Hudson River for over 20 years. Uh, we began working uh, around the North River Sewage Treatment Plant, which was really important to clean up the Hudson River, but it began to pollute our air in West Harlem. So we had to begin organizing around that issue to make sure that that plant did clean up the Hudson River and it also did not pollute our air. And so we have also been involved over the last 10 years um, working uh, with Community Board 9 to lead a community-based planning project to create the West Harlem Piers. And we realized that in order to do that, that we would have to work in coalition with other environmentalists and other groups around the city to have the power and the resources to be able to make that project happen. So we began working with the Waterfront Park Coalition, which had been started by the New York League of Conservation Voters some years ago. And that was a strong advocacy coalition for a variety of neighborhood uh, waterfront access plans. And so we were able to get strong support. We also worked uh, with the Hudson River Park to ensure that there was strong legislation that really began to uh, create that park and create regulation for how the park would be used. So we um, are very happy to be part of the coalition. Success for us is improving public access along the waterfront in northern Manhattan and East Harlem, um, as well as in many other neighborhoods around the city. Uh, we are a, a, a community, uh, we're a city of communities linked by water, and we really need to have access and recreation and be able to have uh, our businesses also have viable commercial um, commercial activities for the waterfront. So we want to be a part of bringing all of that to all of the communities here in New York City. Thank you, Peggy. Um, Mark Matzel with the Trust for Public Land. I am thrilled to be back. Um, somebody, I guess, probably a good 30 people have asked me, what's it like coming back from Alaska? And I got an email yesterday from a close friend who's actually like fly fishing as we speak right now for kings. You bring in a 35 pound king salmon and you can't find the bagel to put it on. <laughs> so you gotta come home. But anyway, um, I just wanna underscore um, what both Laura and Chris Ward said about funding the problem and those things ac actually need to be addressed. I think there's an awful lot that so many of our friends in government have to be proud with over the last few years. Um, funding has occurred through, um, you know, through some well thought out, what I would call serendipity, and when the planets align. And I know that through the New York, New Jersey Harbor Estuary Program, then morphed um, into the CRIP and the comprehensive plan by the Army Corps of Engineers and the amazing advocacy of the New York, New Jersey Baykeeper and so many people around the table. Um, have prioritized you know, restoration and acquisition sites, many that have occurred. And I know that, um, you know, I think back to when I left, there were about $30 million in projects at that time that were funded through HAP, through various funds, the Port Authority, and it, it was the same cast of characters through the, the remarkable vision of what I call the Chris's Squared. It's Chris Ward and Chris Eppy contributed $60 million for the HAP efforts that are now, um, or for the Harbor Estuary, um, program priority efforts that are now just about spent out. Congress member Serrano embraced um, the harbor plan and he secured nearly 30 million in funding. There were bioengineering projects, um, development of uh, including riparian stabilization of places um, as disparate as um, the Bronx River on the one end of the continuum where my colleagues Mike Feller and Mara Larson who are in here, 
here um, spearheaded that effort working with the Bronx Harbor Coalition. There's been work um, in, on the New Jersey side of Liberty Park and Lincoln State Park. Um, some great efforts by government, including, including New Jersey DEP, that launched an, an ambitious uh, natural resources damages program that, um, that helped to support close to about $75 million in projects over the last three to four years. New York City DEP, under the really the incredible direction of Kaz Holloway and Carter Strickland and others, have, have been advancing long-standing restoration projects in the harbor, including rent, landfill reclamation in Jamaica Bay, and, and actually um, handling the, the Draconian effort of reducing CSO um, inputs into the harbor. And of course, my buddy Adrian Benepe has done a remarkable job to restore and reclaim waterfront. Um, including places like Randall's Island and um, on the Harlem and East River. And the Trust for Public Land, we're engaged in you know, a whole suite of land acquisition projects now in the harbor, including on the Harlem River, um, just above Hybrid Park. And we're doing a restoration effort um, with Port Authority funding. And the Port Authority has been spectacular through that, throughout this effort um, to restore um, a boat, an old boatyard in northern Staten Island. Um, and do some habitat restoration. But as my colleagues at the table have said, there needs to be a lot more, and there needs, it needs to be less serendipitous and more dedicated funding. And um, it's something that we look forward to building in this coalition effort. Thank you. Thanks. I'll stand up for, for the next question. Um, so recognizing that it's very early to prioritize in any really specific way, but, and we know that we have all of these plans out there, I want to ask each panelist to just talk about a specific project that your organization is excited about. It may not be representative, but it will illustrate one or more of the, the shared goals that I read earlier, the six goals of the coalition. You're asking the guy from Washington to um, talk about the work that MPCA is doing um, in terms of particular projects. Um, I would actually probably um, I, I would I was I would introduce um, Darcy Shire Knowles and Alex Brash, who are from MPCA, who would be able to fill and correct me for anything that I may say that is wrong um, regarding the work that we're doing here. But one of the things I know I'm particularly proud about that our organization is doing is the work at Floyd Bennett Field with, with you guys. Um, um, and trying to figure out a way of, of, of really connecting people back to, to that part of um, Gateway National Recreation Area. Um, it's work that um, we've been doing as an organization and really spearheaded from our Northeast Regional Office, um, led by Alex and his uh, team, Darcy, who are both here, um, to really engage the community to try and figure out a, a great way to, to reconnect people back to to some of the some of that green space, um, and so that was one of the projects that I know I'm particularly proud of. And Alex and Darcy are both here, so if you want to learn more about that, I encourage you to talk to them if you don't know um, if you don't know what it is we're doing there. Well, uh, I can tell you that one of the great things about a coalition is that your coalition partners talk about the projects that you're supporting. So, uh, <laughs> let that, I think that's the that's the lesson here. Um, you know, I think. For us, I mean, there's any number of projects that I could talk about, but I think the most, and let me just raise one, we're doing a lot of work along the Brooklyn uh, waterfront through the Brooklyn, Greenway, yeah. along with our partners, the Brooklyn Greenway Initiative. And I think in that project, what's, what strikes me most is that uh, the diversity of the neighborhoods along the 14 mile route and how each of them are looking to access the waterfront and the water in their own way. And whether it's piers or uh, restore small restored natural areas, uh, small open space nodes or stormwater improvements uh, that can reduce the CSO burden on, um, on, this, on the waters. Um, there's any number of projects that I think neighborhoods uh, want to move forward on. And unfortunately, uh, too often it's not the imagination, it's uh, really not, I mean, it used to be trying to get uh, city agencies on board and I think that's you know, really no longer the case with a lot of these things. But it is unfortunately funding uh, and it's the idea that um, uh, trying to get the money uh, to make these projects happen, not just because we need the money, but it's also because I think having the help from Washington uh, can help raise the profile of projects, and it gives everyone kind of a common goal to shoot for. So I think that's one of the things uh, that, that through a, a coalition, yes, we're into Washington, but I think it's a way of elevating projects uh, for government uh, throughout the region. 
When I took the job with Baykeeper, the first word out of everybody's mouth was oysters. I got endless oyster jokes. So it's no surprise that oyster restoration research is one of the projects that we would be most excited about elevating the profile, getting additional federal funding. Um, we work with 19 project partners and we actually are about to have exciting news about um, bringing our oyster restoration research back in New Jersey. Um, but so that would probably be our number one project that we really want to focus on as part of the coalition. Um, and Baykeeper are also particularly concerned about water quality, which impacts um, so many of our restoration efforts and our oyster research. Um, so we would like to see some federal assistance tackling CSOs in New Jersey. Um, and finally, we are about to produce a report on um, Baykeeper's conser Baykeeper Conservation Program's um, site acquisitions in the Harbor Estuary. And we think um, once we produce this report, we're going to have, it'll sort of guide us to pick some, some um, specific acquisitions we used to pursue federal funding for in New Jersey. Well, there are two projects that we're very excited about. One is certainly securing funding for the East Harlem um, River Park to make sure that all of the phases are completed. So the Harlem River Park is an important one for us. And certainly one close to my heart is the uh, fact that the mayor um, closed the 135th Street Marine Transfer Station. And he has given that tra uh, station, uh, the sanitation department is giving it up to the Department of Parks. We've already had, um, working with Community Board 9, a community visioning process to use what's about a 28,000 square foot uh, facility that's on piers in the Hudson. And we're looking forward to putting that back to a fabulous reuse and having a wonderful community facility that really uh, complements the uh, West Harlem Piers Park. So that's something that's very exciting for us. Thank you. Um, the Trust for Public Land has had a really fabulous visioning legacy over the last couple of decades. I think they um, initiated with uh, um, the Audubon Society um, the Buffer the Bay report as well as the Harbor Herons report and we're on the brink now of working on a, um, a visioning exercise for the Astoria and Long Island City waterfront and in the first two visioning exercises at least a thousand acres were, requir were acquired on both the New York and New Jersey side of the drink where of course those um, suite of five colonial wading bird species um, um, share you know about political across political lines we're also on the um, about to finish closing on a really wonderful site called Depot Place, which is supported by Port Authority funds um, on the Harlem River, again, just north of Highbridge Park, and we had to remove 100 um, docks from the site, apparently. It was like pretty difficult. It was an old dog pound. And, um, and finally, I also mentioned the site and uh, also acquired the Port Authority dollars, so a major shout out to the Chris's Squared. I don't know if Chris Ward left, if he jumped off, but a big thank you to Chris Ward and Chris Eppy for, for their vision and providing funding. Thanks. Um, I'd like for, for our panelists to talk a little bit about strategies for Washington, and we can, we don't have to go in order if you want to jump in, but um, you know, this is the first time in a long time that New York City organizations have had a concerted effort focused on bringing federal money here, this kind of advocacy, it's sort of long-term, you know, very um, specific kind of advocacy. And so, you know, Washington is not the most hospitable place these days. So I want to hear a little bit about what the thinking has been so far. Is this on? Well, I'll start. I, uh, my background is as a federal lobbyist, and my boss, um, and my old firm told me there's no such thing as a bad time in Washington. And I know a lot of people are sort of poo-pooing our idea that this is the time to pursue a, um, an authorizing mechanism, and I would strongly disagree. Um, also, as a federal lobbyist, I think, or past federal lobbyist, I think you need professional guidance, and that's what we're doing. We have three organizations with strong Washington presence, and we also may bring in additional support as needed. I would just say we're, we're going to need all of your support here. 
and today has been a wonderful time for uh, the Metropolitan Waterfront Alliance and the Harbor Coalition uh, to really begin to develop that strong base of support. And so we're going to start with you. We need press conferences, we need letters, we need lobby days, and we need you all to support that and come out and speak and educate uh, your elected officials around these issues. So those are some of the strategies that we're going to be incorporating, and we need a strong New York City presence to make that happen. And I would just add to all of those um, those things, I think all of them are important. I also agree that it's there's never really a bad time in Washington. I think there's just a time where you have to manage your expectations of what you can get done in Washington. And I think right now, I think it would be good to it's a lot. A lot isn't going to get done in Washington right now, especially if you're looking at in, in authorizing big new um, federal programs. But right now is also a perfect time to begin to do the kind of education work that um, you've begun to do. You had what three or four members of Congress here this morning, which is which is a terrific turnout. And to begin to have educate them to what's going on, and then have them educate the rest of their delegation to what's going on. I think will will serve you um, in the long run as you as you as you move forward. Um, also, I would note, and I've heard it mentioned a couple of times throughout the day, people are talking about dedicated funding. I would suggest finding a new way of talking about that, because dedicated funding means funding that's outside of the appropriations process, and um, that might be a, 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 play, a deal killer for a lot of members of Congress. So just as a practical um, approach to um, trying to be successful, I would, I would find a different way of, of looking at um, calling dedicated funding something else, and I don't really know what that would be, but um, a lot of people respond very badly to when you're talking about um, dedicating any pot of money to, to a particular task, um, because members of Congress like to control the purse strings for all sorts of things, so um, that would just be a couple of, a couple of thoughts. Uh, just to, to add to what's been said, I think uh, Laura mentioned before that there's great interest uh, in the administration down in Washington in, in several things that I think are really germane here in the harbor. First, uh, through the America's Great Outdoors report, uh, there's a lot of interest in sort of large landscapes like the harbor, you know, places where there's a mix of conservation and economic development, uh, working waterfronts as well as recreational areas. Um, there's also a lot of interest in urban areas. And I think for the first time that I can remember, uh, maybe since the 1960s, a real focus on the part of the National Park Service, the Department of the Fish and Wildlife Service, other federal agencies on urban open spaces, on urban natural areas. And I think that's something that, again, the harbor can speak directly to those interests. Um, and also, I think we have a great champion here at City Hall. I mean, I think we heard a lot from the uh, city agencies uh, here uh, earlier. Uh, but I, I think it, it's certainly an asset that this coalition at this time can use to our advantage down in D.C. The fact that New York City is putting so much money right now into the harbor, in the, into the waterfront plan, into the public spaces here, uh, and something that, that we can build on as well. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just to echo what Rob said, there, there are a couple of brilliant reports out there. I think the Harbor Estuary Program produced um, a really extraordinary document. Um, the CRIP through the Army Corps of Engineers basically backed and supported um, the, the restoration work and efforts and initiatives of the HEP. The advocacies that are out there uh, have been remarkably supportive and uh, the fact that we had so many legislators aboard here, the mayor's um, blueprint is, is phenomenal and I think, you know, as Elizabeth stated, I mean, it's, and, and Peggy, there's, there's got to be like a, a combination of letters and follow up with our elected public officials to make sure that, um, that they actually, you know, put funding where all the processes have taken place. And it's not like we're asking for new appropriations. It's basically a vision that's been put out and it's, um, it hasn't been um, you know, matched by the federal funding support that's needed to really start to execute.